grab your mochas, grab your lattes, grab your cappuccinos, whatever the hell you're drinking, settle on in. It's your boy, your host today, co-host actually, Jobbers and Goons, or Splash, and we are discussing all things Kingsverse today. Basically, the Stevens King verse, I don't feel like it's discussed a lot. Don't feel like the characters are talked about. Don't feel like the scaling's talked about. A lot of factors. And uh, I brought a member of the coffee shop today to help discuss it, as he too is very knowledgeable on the topic. So with me today is my boy Q. I'm gonna let him say what's up. How y'all doing? It's Q. Uh, I'm glad to be here again for another King Banger. And can we get started? Yeah, so this is going to be a new style video being introduced to the coffee shop. I want you guys in the comment section to let me know what you think of it. Basically, we're just going to free flow discuss the whole verse. Discuss important aspects of it, important characters, uh, and what we feel like is worth talking about with the verse and everything that comes with it. So, if you want to get to know the Kings first, this is probably a really good video for you to start with. And, again you like this style of video, we'll definitely keep doing similar type content. Now, to begin, since you know, you're know you a guest, and by the way, make sure to go check out Q's channel, link in the description. Um, what topic do you want to discuss first within the Kingverse? Oh boy. Um, so much I guess, should we kind of start with going over, you know, Gon himself and kind of maybe the formation of the Dark Tower and the main universe. Sound good? Yeah, we could we could do that. And again, there will be an accompanying video where we actually do the cosmology. So if people, if you want to see that after this, uh, you should be expecting that soon. And by the way, for this video, you'll see like gaming uh, content on the screen because it's just a discussion video. Uh, but anyways, yeah, the... Dark Towers are a bit tricky because we do know at one point there's either an original version of them or it like suffered something catastrophic where it uh, like at, at one point almost collapsed and fell into the prem uh, and it was caught by Maturin and later secured by Guardians. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what the tower is obviously it's the nexus of all things. It contains the concept of size, which is essentially the idea that something could transcend or be bigger. That concept or idea, which should be the strongest concept or idea ever, because that basically introduces the idea of like a, su a supreme power at some point. Um, it gets pretty wonky at that level. I mean, what do you think? Uh, for sure. Actually, thinking about it, kind of, you know, the creation of all of this, it already, already is a great opportunity to kind of emphasize how tricky it is to uh, discuss maybe a, you know, even continuity with all this, because let's say everything did, you know, there are no universes, no multiverses, nothing. It was just, you know, the prim, which was just like Rossi thing, you know, like a super creation and gone like rose from this he was the first spirit of the dark tower quote unquote and you know he kind of spun everything into existence the first tower and first this was like him and everything and you know it was going well but then an old one great old one came which is from the prim later they're like very powerful almost godlike beings and uh Marilyn came and I'll, we'll go over this like more in depth but Marilyn came, basically, he used the Prim to almost, like, beat up Gon's, like, main avatar. And Gon made the beams and guardians after that to secure him. But then, Splash, I ask, um, so, you know, it, it stated that, you know, Gon made the tower and it fell and Matarin, you know, like, scooped it up. Would, yeah. would you say, like, yeah, so, like... Would you say there are multiple towers then? Because as soon as Gon first uh, formed, he had the tower destroyed almost by Marilyn. But then, would you say he just like spun another once he created Maturin? So that's, I guess, logical, right? Um, it's possible. I also think um, 
perhaps this is like the second almost like marvel has different um cosmologies like first cosmos second third fourth so on this might be like a second cosmos or a second dark towers that might be more where it leans in terms of like narrative value and what actually occurred yeah i, I would say um after the first initial creation of the dark tower things are getting a bit shaky in terms of yeah like where you would want to see these kind of cosmos taking form since you know everything that happens will happen or happens later will be contained in the dark tower to that point so things can kind of get you know a bit convoluted or complicated but it's interesting to think about um just possibly how many dark towers he's weaved into existence it's uh... another thing too i had previously like mentioned to you the concept of like king alluding to true or being not grasping the true nature of certain things that's yeah. what makes them horrifying just wanted to get your perspective on like if you agree that's kind of how king applied to scaling uh and what's your like thoughts on that concept i would say in a sense i would actually give king props in terms of forming a good multiverse you know continuity sense if you've read his stuff He's actually very formulaic, formulaic and like strategic about implementing all of his novels, uh, you know, with each other to form like an actual multiverse through the beams. But in certain instances, let's say with it, you know, when he was literally sadly, you know, on cocaine to write it, I would say, you know, with that also being one of his first novels, which really amped up his verse, maybe that was kind of you know the first main. A uh, jump start point, which yeah, kind of led his the rest of his scaling to be kind of crazy, and maybe he kind of built off of that. But I'd say he redeemed himself a bit since it's in, it's crazy how many references each novel has to each other. I'm gonna make a video related to that down the line. Um, but yeah, I can see your point. I I agree for sure. I think another thing too. And, um, by the way, if y'all hear me munching, I'm eating. We're at the coffee shop. It's vibes. But anyways, <laughs> I think another pretty, um, crazy aspect in terms of how the verse was approached by King is, um, there's, I'm trying to think of, like, the best way to put this. It's like, it's simple, yet extremely convoluted. Um, like, the gunslinger in concept is pretty simple. He, um, nothing too crazy, literally like an archetypal hero. But the story, the shit he's dealing with, the uh, fictional transcendences, the uh, oh multiversal <laughs> hopping around, it actually ends up fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people kind of lose sight in that. And um, on top of that, I kind of want to touch on something I think is funny to consider. I want to get your thoughts on it. Because of how strong the King's verse would scale in terms of the book universes, how strong they'd inherently be, given they like fictionally transcend the real world, <clears throat> I think they would... Like, <laughs> like, what do you think of the idea of like Cujo being out of Versal? I guess that's how I'll put it. Good. I mean, they literally, like, canonically link up to each other, no matter, like, if you, you know, how much you hate it, you know, they they do. And it's, uh, it's so easy to scale characters relative to each other, especially if they are, let's say, the main character within uh, the verse, antagonist or protagonist. Um... And Kujo was absolutely dominating almost everyone within that novel. And there are constants within that novel to reference, you know, Maturin as like being a dream almost, you know, like being like a you know, kid story. And the scaling is, should be equivalent to the um, novels of the Dark Tower. And I don't know, it's, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I, 
I feel like it's crazy in the novel. It feels like so. There's portions when like the kids looking in his closet every night, and it's implied like Cujo's like possessed by like a high tier demon, like either yeah. Randall Flag or um, or Marilyn or um, Penny even. Like it's pretty weird. Um, and the funny thing is like we actually do have to consider if Cujo's that level. Because Man in Blacks appeared in multiple stories throughout the Kingverse. He appears in nine different stories, I believe, or um, novels, excluding the Dark Tower. And he goes under Randall uh, or Martin, so, so, so the bastard is really tricky. And he can go back all the way possibly to Carrie, where it was the black man with eyes of crimson smiling at her. Um, so maybe you could say that he even corrupted her at one point, which led her to, you know, killing, almost killing everyone in there. Um, since obviously, you know, he's the servant of, um, the Crimson King, who encompasses all evil throughout the entire verse. So, I could see him literally being a troll of just corrupting people, or things, in, like, any, any possible novel you could possibly think of. Um, like, I'm reading 1123, um... Sorry, 112263 right now, which is about a time traveler trying to stop uh, Kennedy's assassination and by King. And uh -huh. um, it references like Pennywise, but also I'm pretty sure Oswald in that is possessed by Randall at one point, um, which is funny. I don't know. I, oh man, I'm looking at the, I'm gonna, I'm about to look up the book right now for Cujo, but. I deadass think, I read it years ago, before I was scaling, but I deadass think he, uh, he had mentioned either Pennywise or a high-tier demon as possessing Cujo. Oh, that would be, that would be pretty sick if it was Pennywise. Imagine fucking, uh, like, oh, oh my god, almost boundless Cujo, imagine. <laughs> Bro, Cujo was a problem. Dude, Kucho, I mean, yeah, dude is absolutely destroying everyone. If like, you guys don't well, know who that is, that's a dog from a classic Stephen King novel and movie. Huge dog just feasting upon everyone. Um, but yeah, going, going back to like, yeah, saying like the possession aspect, and it doesn't even have to be, let's say, beings of evil potential, because, I mean, right in near the like beginning of dark tower 2 like the drawing of three that introduces we'll get into like maybe the own world later which is a huge <laughs> thing in its own. but it brings up roland you know classic roland being able to do everything narrative you know warping he can go into like doors which lead to other like our world realities and take control of anyone um he can like weasel his way into other narratives without anyone knowing and like it was later elaborated that these doors that he goes through are gateways to whole other dimensions. So he can literally just dimension hop to extreme levels, take control of narratives and different stories without anyone knowing, and just leave. Like, what? <laughs> I don't get it. Yo, real quick. Who have you, do you remember the dead zone at all? Oh boy, it's, it rings a bell, but I probably couldn't uh, elaborate too Frank, much on it. Frank Dodd. That, that sounds familiar, yeah. It's suspected that Frank Dodd's ghost was the one haunting Cujo. I'm trying mm. to figure out if Dodd is another Randall Flag avatar. I'm looking into it right now. I don't remember. But yeah, now nah, the Avatar, I think, I think, okay, so we could talk about this. Who do you think the most interesting character in the Kingverse? Start throwing names out there. Oh, that's hard. Um, well, uh, like the whole Kingverse. Ooh, um, because I've just been reading, like, all of his stuff lately. I mean, based on, you know, just recognition, I like... I like the, I like the arc of Shami. I'm sorry. I know you hate him since you think he's a bootlicker, but he <laughs> <Seth> is. 
Yeah. He was a slave, then he joined the Cotet, you know, he deals with the grapefruit, then becomes a beam eater, and he almost, like, destroys the Crimson King as, like, you know, a, a sadly a mentally challenged, like, a uh, young child, but he also, um, fun fact, which is dope, he literally went into our world, which, you know, it's a thing in the King verse we go into, and he saved Stephen King from the car crash that, you know, almost killed him in real life. Which made him, you know, let him write his further Dark Tower books. Mm -hmm. So I'd say he's really good. And I'm liking all the characters from uh, 11, 22, 63, to be honest. It's a really good book. What about you, though? Mordred? <laughs> um, I'd put Randall Flagg and the Man in Black in general up there. I mean, he's figuring out how far the extent of his... Uh, manipulation has impacted the multiverse has always been fascinating for me. I mean, True. he's a character that's popped up in so many different stories you wouldn't expect and just made changes to them that were crazy. Yeah, for, and um, for everyone listening, he was uh, one of the main characters in The Stand, which a, lot of, a good amount of you probably know. It's one of King's best works. Um, yeah. He's, he's popped over everywhere and made huge changes, which is crazy. Alright, so yeah, so Dodd, from what I'm seeing, it's implied he controlled Cujo. So like I said, they have a bunch of like characters that are weird like that. Um, Dodd was also mentioned in It at one point, apparently. Um... Yeah, man. It's ooh, so interesting. Gunslinger. I fucking love Gunslinger. Um, True. Gunslinger, Roland of Gilead. He's um, he's a character that lacks imagination. Literally, does not have imagination. So it's fascinating see the seeing the way he embraces things, um, and the way he battles his own like cursed emotions. Um, He's also a character that's made wild ass decisions like when he killed Jake in order to just potentially get the drop on Man in Black. You're like yeah. shit. And then like after that he would like challenge you if you called him out for it. He'd be like, so what I did that shit? Like, yeah, I did it. What are you gonna you do about it? <laughs> yeah, I'm the gunslinger. I'm pulling up. And it's like, fuck. But then you see he's supposed to be slow uh, and dumb. But, like, what's often used as a trope in the King verse, um, his mind is actually super vast, um, allowing him to basically view the universe. In fact, while I do something real quick, I'm going to kind of let Q talk about, um, like, what, what that means by seeing the universe, just how crazy the mind of uh, Roland is, and then... If I'm not back by then, he'll lead into the next topic, but go ahead. Okay, well, first following up on that, yeah, speaking of his mind, I have a, one of, you know, the well-known you know, little, like, passages here in the end of The Gunslinger, and this was, the, you know, the man in black who has been observing him the whole time. You know, he's like, your mind, your slow, plodding, tenacious mind, there's never been one quite like it on the history of the world, perhaps in all of creation. So he has, you know, the strongest mind of all creation that can affect the universe. And you might say just like the universe, but that's, it holds infinite concepts, which by, I mean, we, we've all covered it by now since it's just so ridiculous how, let's just say in the main, main universe, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like DC main universe, main multiverse, like that sort of situation. Like, you know, where Midworld is, where the main Dark Tower is, that's what the Man in Black's referring to, which, uh... Rowan can basically just make his bitch a lot of the time. And, you know, we have the classic, let's say, speck of sand, which holds trillions of infinite universes, universes like, piled on top of each other. These are completely irrelevant to him. And if anything, he could probably, like, mind hacks these. It's, it's absolutely insane. And if not, um, I wanted to get into this with Splash Me Comes Back, but if he ever gets bored of, uh, basically... Mind hacking uh, an infinite number of multiverses, he can just go into our world again, quote unquote, and take on any role within the Kingverse. 
you could say, besides maybe King himself, since, you know, he's writing a lot of the stuff, and he's had numerous conversations with uh, Rowland, but uh, King can't change Rowland's narrative. So basically just think, so Rowland encompasses, like, hope. Uh, Superman encompasses hope. Let's say Superman pulled up on the presence or something. Or, you know, Superman's, like, equal to Marvel, pulled up on, like, the one above all. And the presence of one above all couldn't do anything to that character. That's that's Rowland for you. So, yeah, that, that's just, that's a universe, quote-unquote, for you. Crazy stuff. So, I guess when... Uh, to uh, use some time, I want to give some respect to Marilyn. So, people don't talk about Marilyn too much, and he is arguably, with the Crimson King up there for maybe second or third strongest character, actually. He's not referenced much, but he basically followed Gon after he was formed in the Prim. Like, he was the second to, you know, crawl out of there. He was the strongest great old one ever, who again were godlike beings. And he basically... Um, after all the other great old ones, which the Crimson King is also a part of, he like wove the entire, almost entirety of the whole entire Prim, which is basically you could say, kind of you know creation itself. What stories are like encompassed out of? He he wove this into I think it was what was it like the Mirror of Madness I believe it was called, and he basically just told some demons to stuff it into the Dark Tower. And it just like scratched Gon apart, basically making Gon have to like reweave a new one, and that's when the beams are put into place for stability and to kind of heal Gon over time. So that that was why the first beams were formed, and it's like kind of interesting actually. Like I guess you could just say all of his other stories, King stories, kind of stemmed off that naturally, like little leaves or thorns off of the beams since those were so early and then he made the 12 guardians um to you know guard them afterwards but they don't even scale to maryland i think uh oh did i did i return on a maryland rant <laughs> oh no no i was just uh giving you know a little maryland respect in your gun i think he deserves a little giving them a backstory on him yeah he's Southeast, not that much yeah he's not nah, he's definitely a monster um he also he also made the the spheres of uh, creation, the colored gems. You know, like the the grapefruit, which is huge in the main storyline of the Dark Tower. And he made the black one, which literally encompasses Todash space. So Todash um, is a major like realm yeah, of yep. existence in the verse. I think it's, isn't that like compared to Prem, or like a void. Yeah, it's it's argued to kind of be connected to it. It's like where, say, you know, like the, you know, the mist. Obviously, that's another Stephen King classic. Like, yeah, and yeah, um, obviously, those are a bunch of like eldritch horrors which come out of you know these rifts, and it's obviously highly specified to be from Todash space rifts, and um, those beings come from the depths of the Prim. Which are like gross, like manifestations of evil. So that can technically happen anywhere within the King Verse Two, which is interesting. That further illustrates to people how strong the base universes of King Verse are. Like that was a gro fucking grocery store, and beings from the Prim, beyond the concept of size, um, can manifest there. Yeah, it's something I'm saying. And um, I don't know. It it can it, it can affect everything in the sense that there's this. It was uh, the stories from Sofa Lord Perth. It was part of the uh, Dark Tower comics at the end. So, um, some may say this is like bull crap, but this was approved by King, so I'm calling it canon. And you know, this story's of the Dark Tower. Um, the tower is the linchpin of you know time space continuum and not only does it link all possible versions of our world but it also contains all of stephen king's imaginary worlds as well so basically using this could you say toad ash base could maybe pull up behind you splash and kill you <laughs> yeah for sure it encompasses uh. our world man 
This this it has such cheesy passages sometimes I can't. Yeah, I don't know. uh like some people Do might you, say like, would you say this what is the dark tower just a little too ridiculous for you sometimes with the statements? Or do you like it? Um, I think it definitely gets weird, especially when you consider that um, the real world is defined as like being fictionally transcendent. Oh my boy, got absolutely bullied by the Dark Tower. Don't worry, we'll take over. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't trust the comics always, since it was only kind of halfly written by King. Um, he kind of like went on and off from them. But wait, hold on. Absolutely... I think he I think he can't hear me. Hold on. We kind of talked past each other. Give me one second. I'm going to fix that real quick as we're resuming the conversation on the king verse. <clears throat> that there are an infinite amount of our worlds. That hey, can you hear me now? Somehow. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? There you go. Yeah, you just couldn't hear me. I was talking as well. So we were oh having this weird semi conversation, but you couldn't actually hear me. But um, I was answering some of the stuff you were asking. But um, getting back, I I was more, <clears throat> I was like talking about the um, size of the king verse, like how size is used, all that, um, <clears throat> and just how we fictionally like. We're fictionally transcended to like a more than conceptually infinite degree by just basic midworlds in the King Mythos. Midworld just like existing has so many like casual fictional transcendences. Like maybe maybe that was the thing about King. He didn't know what he was doing, but when so many die, passages. <clears throat> when you die in the real world, supposedly. You transcend to the king verse. <laughs> it's fucking great. It's literally heaven. Okay, yeah, so in the, yeah, Jake, in the comments... that happened to Jake. Jake died in the real world in New York, but oh transcended to midworld. Yeah, so in the comments, so, you know, when you have your, you know, sweaty, sweaty uh, comments about, you know, how the king verse is overrated or, you know, Scarlet King get a bit, beat Crimson King, just remember that. When you die, um, I'll see you in the Garden of Roses, just, you know, waking up. Like, what the, what the hell just happened? Actually, you probably <laughs> won't, because most likely they'll transcend and be born as a regular fodder in the regular <laughs> King universe. So, like, in the oh, yeah. book Cell, when everyone answers the cell phone and immediately gets fucking turned rabid zombie, that'd be one of y'all. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You'd be one of the fodder. Yeah, like, that's, that's how strong the verse is. Um, and it's kind of funny like the concept and we'll talk about this in the cosmology about like the concept of size and how it applies to even the most basic universes in the king verse um it, it leads to some wild um scaling uh, speculation and i think at this point we're gonna pan over to a different topic within the king verse um what's your favorite villain um that's tough. I mean, I, I don't want to just be so basic and say, let's say, like, the Crimson King. If you but... go basic, at least explain why you're a basic bitch. Just do that. I might go basic. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, villains. I mean, that's, that's like, pinnacle of King work. That's, that's arguably even a little harder. Um, I mean, I guess arguing the Crimson King a little, I guess he was just such a, you know, key point of just setting up everything that was so dope about the cosmology and i don't know he's such a like rich backstory about i mean it's tragic for Ra uh, roland's father arthur eld got like tricked by the crimson king into like banging him then like ripped him apart like he's a savage and i mean just imagine someone so fucking insane that you can't let them just destroy absolutely everything. Like, as soon as they get in there, I, I don't know. And, like, he's in everything. Like, every book he makes, he's just has such a drip. He's just like, don't come across me. I'll open the deadlights on you since, like, Pennywise is my pawn. And, I don't know. It's, he's just, he's insane. Maybe that's why. I like, I like powerful people. I'd say for me... I think uh, his name was Matern or Matern. 
Um, he, for sure, I might be butchering his name if I am, fuck off. But your friend's good, yeah. Um, he is the former advisor to Roland's father, the gunslinger. And <clears throat> basically, he was a servant of the Crimson King and a sorcerer far beyond even what the man in black had demonstrated. Um, while consulting uh, the gunslinger's father, he basically was working to destroy the narrative of Gunslinger, ruin him before he ever began. So as a child, Gunslinger witnessed his father be killed, which was orchestrated by uh, Matern, or whatever the fuck his name is, Big Dog, Man in Black, Big Man in Black. And then, (laughs) but this is a specific avatar. And he seduced and was forcing himself, you know, for YouTube purposes, gonna use certain wording. Uh, upon Gunslinger's mom. And this was supposed to break and ruin the story of Gunslinger as a child, but instead it, like, amped the, uh, the growth of Gunslinger as he became a man early to, like, get revenge and just not get folded by shit like that. And he even asked, uh, big man in black from a turn or whatever to bow to him like he used to do for his father and my turn was like yeah, get the fuck out and gunslinger like laughed at him and that's when he realized gunslinger was just felt different but he Oops. helped he helped shape gunslinger into one of the most badass characters ever and he was later like consumed by his heart his soul and heart was consumed by a man in black so it's like it's cool anyway um yeah uh what, what do you think about it i mean yeah that's he's um <clears throat> a great character i feel like anything that makes the man in black look petty is you know a huge pro on its own and the development there with uh gunslinger honestly i was gonna say it kind of reminds me thinking about it you know the same like you know happened to his father and mother, you know, this got absolutely sexually destroyed by, you know, great old one spider monstrosities, and then, you know, all his fellow people in Midworld got killed. I feel like, honestly, like, young Rowland is, like, giving me, like, Guts vibes. Like, when, you know, all this fucking, like, soldiers died, and, you know, Fem- Femco, what was it, like, just, I don't know, violated his people, and then... He wants revenge, but in this case, Gunslinger is an actual Chad, and he, you know, kills Crimson King. And meanwhile, Guts is a bitch boy. And does Gunslinger he- ever kill Crimson King? I don't remember if he does. I know his guns were capable at one point, but he's capable. He climbs the top at the end, and he, I believe he did. But then, oh, I don't want to spoil the ending. It's I mean, some people hate it, some people love it. Let's just say, it, um, let's just say kind of. It, let's say it led to a. I'll just say it led to like a reset. So maybe maybe not fully. The end of the last book was kind of questionable. <laughs> yeah, it'd but. be like a. I don't remember there being a conclusive conclusive winner. Maybe that's why I'm having a hard time remembering. Um, still, like stupid impressive he could do that. But then again, his narrative was something Stephen King couldn't even resist writing. Like, Gunslinger was always going to finish his journey. Come hell or high water, literally. Yeah, for sure. Alright, any, <sighs> anything else you want to discuss on this Power Scaling podcast before we wrap it up? Oof. Hmm. I suppose, looking back, you know, when I hit you up, when I hit you up originally with all this stuff about the King verse, you know, and it's like, you're looking up like Pennywise, like yo, check out Pennywise, it's crazy. Did you ever expect the verse to be this broken when you first came in? <laughs> I had seen like billions of dimensions, so I was like, oh, we're probably gonna get like low out or maybe a little higher than that. Something that, you know, the higher ups can really be problematic in like comics. Fight some of the stronger characters, make for good videos. But then when I got the Dark Tower book set um and on the kindle you can skip through by literally hyper searching words so for example i could look up crimson king 
and all mentions will be listed for me and I can jump around know where it's mentioned and then get context by reading before after all that shit basically you super jump through the book uh, I quickly realized through the box set that uh, the scaling was fucking ridiculous um, and mm -hmm. then uh, if you realize I say the most crucial things to scaling this first dark towers books or comics comics give you a pretty good idea but the books are really crucial um, and then it it has a lot of shit. Especially and with the Beyond Lands and Maturin and all that. If you like, um, and then if you want to just like, um, go to others, because they're obviously all inter interconnected, I recommend, there's a whole, like, huge fat chapter out of nowhere. I was reading Insomnia. So like, uh, maybe check that one out. On the Crimson King, there's a whole chapter on him. Um, pulling up. So... Yeah, that's uh, maybe some recommendations to get started for anyone who's interested. But... Fact, yeah, no, that's Sounds that's good. true. Yeah, but anyways, guys, thank you for watching. This has been what might be the beginning of a new series, like a power scaling coffee shop podcast. Uh, and we were discussing the King verse today, just stuff off the top of our head. If you want to see a part two to this, where we come back and discuss the King verse even further smash the like button as well as check out the king vs cosmology video when it drops and check out q's channel as well uh before we leave q you want to say anything um yeah thanks for watching everyone um king content is something goaded and on my channel i'll be soon uh with splash doing I believe Randall Flag from here, or you know, Man of Black, also known as, versus what else you want to say, the opponent? Mandrak from DC <laughs> Comics. Oh, I two know, I just, dickheads, I could... yeah, two dickheads yeah. versus each other on a cosmic scale. It'll be good. So yeah, that might be the next video, and then I will be also doing a, you know, precise uh, little cosmology for King Two down the line, but. I gotta read a lot more of his novels for that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's actually a way bigger cosmology than people think. With like, there being over seventy books involved. So and he wrote like eight hundred page books. <laughs> yeah, he he likes the eight to twelve hundred range. It's crazy, but yeah, okay. guys, thank you for tuning in again. Check out his channel. Check out my main channel, Jabba Jagoons. And again, you got any questions? If you like this, comment down below as well you can join the discord server and talk to us about it but anyways guys it's been your host jobbers and goons along with q and we'll see y'all later peace peace all right it should be man this is a good episode it should be wrapping up on the recording hold on kind of glitching so we'll see